I had this idea to make a Canadiana wall sconce. And do you think I could find one? No. I looked in all sorts of books, and all I could find was beautiful European fancy stuff. So I made a kind of combination. It's primitive and yet evocative, really. And that's copper, very lightweight copper, almost foil. And it looks really pretty when it's lit because the candlelight reflects off the copper. And that copper is really fun to work with. It's embossed, and I'll show you how to do that. But the first thing I want to tell you is that when you buy the pine for this project, try to get a nice, smooth, even board like this, a white board. If you get this kind of board with a lot of coloration in it, the, th those lines are full of sap. They're called pitch pockets, and they're very sticky, and they gum up your blade, and they make the work a little bit tough. Plus, they tend to ooze even after you've, you've painted the darn thing. So get a nice, clear whiteboard if you can. And the first thing you have to do is some geometry, which, like, frankly, that turns me off right away, and I'd be not wanting to do the project, except that I got 11% in geometry. <laughs> I proudly can say that. And in Mrs. Chow, if you're there, um, I, I liked the class, even though I didn't do well in it, OK? You still have to suck up to your math teacher, no matter what age you're at. OK, so here's the deal. We're going to draw a radius. A radius is part of a circle, right? So I'm going to measure across my board to three inches, and also I'm going to measure down three inches. And that's the place I'm going to put my little sharp pointy bit, right there. Then I, I, I want to draw it right up to the middle, and then just walk, oops, just walk my pencil around like that. See, part of it is I'm left-handed, and I'm using my right hand. No, you see, I didn't. <laughs> it's always, OK, I need a. I need, I just need to take a break and call Mrs. Chow, actually, because you see what always happens is it, I'll just split the difference. I'll just move the compass over a little bit. You see, geometry is supposed to be an exact science, but frankly, it isn't. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to get in touch with my rage now. All right. So look, let's try that again. Over. Now it's in a totally different place. But it came out better. It did. Okay. So now that my board's thoroughly marked up, that worked really well. I've, I'm thinking about, whoa, 12% on that, on that one. OK, so i got to cut that out. But first, I'm going to put another one just like that at this end. And uh, so I get to do this all over again. Three inches. Measured down three inches. While history doesn't tell us much about Euclid, he was probably tough to cook for. Because who can produce a perfectly circular pancake? My guess is that Euclid's domestic partner was probably fairly crabby. OK. Oop. Yes, you did very well. All right, so now I want to sand off all these little bits of tear out along the edges, because they're nasty looking. and. Um, you can just use a little bit of a hand sand if you want to, because that usually takes it off. However, if you've got some nasty bumps like I have, because I you know, just was a bit sloppy, like that one right there, and also there's another nasty nick right there, it would be much better if you had a, uh, an electric sander, because it will take a long time to work those out by hand. So this is a random orbital sander. And this disk actually spins, plus the little holes suck up the sawdust so that you don't get a, a, an eye full and an ear full and other body parts full of sawdust. So again, you want to wear these, though, because it sometimes throws a bit of dust around. <laughs> It took that nick out. I love these things. They take out a lot more material a lot faster than, um, than a palm sander, which just vibrates a little bit. And I'm also 
also going to take all these edges down because they're very sharp and that doesn't look weathered and pioneer like at all to me. So I'll, I'll soften and round over all these edges and then we'll go cut the hole, this hole, using a hole saw and also we have to chisel out this, this uh, little hole that holds the candle. Okay, all smooth and lovely now. Very pioneer-like, very weathered by cows nuzzling the old boards kind of feeling. All right, now we have to get this little hole happening here. Now you could use a jigsaw and, you know, trace around a hole, or you could use this, which is a hole saw. See, it's a drill bit and on the outside of the drill bit, so the drill bit centers this blade as it goes down through the wood. So um, I'll just... I'll just pick a spot that seems about the middle at one end of the board. That's about right. Of course, it'll probably hang crooked in perpetuity, but safety glasses on. Oh, and I better clamp the board down because the hole saws have quite a bit of a kick to them. So you wouldn't want to just get the board in the hip. And one more clamp. All right, so brace your hand against the drill, uh, especially if you're using a drill with a cord on it because they have a lot of kick. Because once this starts to grab the wood, it will want to throw itself against me. Now, it seems to be going really slowly, but that's because all these teeth are having to chew through a huge amount of wood. So every once in a while, clean the blade out because they just it just gets clogged, especially if the wood is sappy. Oh, I always think I'm almost there and I'm just not almost there. I think I got it now though. Yeah, look. Ooh, it's smoking. <sighs> okay, now, getting that little plug out is sometimes really tricky. You have to use a sharp implement like a screwdriver. They give you these little holes specifically for popping the plug out. Come on. And you have to get the plug out before you can change the darn thing. So, because we're going to move up to a whole other. Look, we're going to go up to this baby. <laughs> to drill out the little mortise for the candle to sit on. There. Oh, there it comes. Yay. There. See? Perfect. I don't know what you can do with that, but a, a necklace, really. <laughs> okay, so we'll get this one off and put in the other big hole saw. All right, now, um, this little hole that we're going to do here is for the place where the candle sits, and it should be quite close to the lip of the bottom piece here. So I'm eyeballing to make sure it's centered and a little bit closer to the lip. If you, did, if you make it too far back, then the candle is going to sit too close to the copper and you won't be able to see it nicely. Okay, so off we go. Oh, safety glasses. Okay, now really brace yourself on this one, okay, because it really tends to grab, grab. And uh, the correct technique for a hole saw of this size is to go mmm, mmm, mmm with it, okay? Okay, that was a little bit violent. And that's about deep enough. You just want to go about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, and that gives you the little ridge around... Uh, this high bit, now I gotta chisel that high bit out, so this is really fun, especially if you have a ch sharp chisel. If you have a dull chisel, this really sucks. Okay, so put the beveled side of the chisel facing down, otherwise you'll go too deep. And you just wanna scrape the chisel across like this. 
And it's much easier to go across the grain for this kind of application. Like this. And I'll just keep going till I have the whole circle carved out with a little indent. Edna St. Vincent Millay mentions Euclid in her poetry. Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. Did the renowned poet actually love geometry? Or did she spend math class wondering how Euclid looked in the buff? We just don't know. Okay, I've done most of the trimming going this way across the grain, and now I'm just tidying it up by going with the grain. Now, if your chisel isn't sharp enough to take a nice curl, then you need to sharpen your chisel, man. Because it's hard to, even when you buy chisels new, they're never quite sharp enough. <sighs> okay, so that's gonna hold a candle nicely. So now what I wanna do is actually cut the, the thing in half, finally. So I'm gonna be sinking it in, see? It has to go in about a quarter of an inch, so I'm just going to cut a little bit off here, about that much, and then saw it off using my pull saw. <laughs> Always think I'll be done earlier, but I'm not. There it is. Okay, now while you're in the mood and got your arm warmed up, you want to draw two more lines because remember, this guy has to fit into a little channel right across the bottom. So I'm just going to trace him more or less square. That's about right. Oops. There and there. Then I'm going to saw those two lines about a quarter of an inch down and just chisel it out. And that gives me the channel I need to mount the, the little base. Okay? Off we go. Okay, ready to chisel. So exactly a three-quarter of an inch wide chisel is great because it just moves right along. Oops, glasses. By the way, you can use a really smaller hammer, but the bigger they are, the less aimings involved. So I'm going with that. So we're going to finish this, and then we'll paint this baby up and start to do the copper. If you're not a geometrically precise person, you already know that simply guessing the center of something is as good as measuring for it. Just make sure that you live in a house with tilted floors and crooked walls, where anything hanging straight would completely ruin the mood. Okay, I, I've finished building the basic structure for my wall sconce. Ta-da! Put the little shelf in place with glue. And I'm now coating it with a, a layer of shellac, which is a, it's a weird substance actually made from bug excretions in India and Indonesia, and then they mix it with denatured alcohol. So it doesn't smell too badly and it doesn't give you headaches and stuff and I love that but it dries really fast look it's, it's already dry so I can go ahead and paint it and I'm gonna use this actual milk paint last year I tried making my own milk paint and it was kind of a disaster so I've been actually buying it this year it comes in all these nice pretty pioneer looking colors and um, I'm going with the Lexington green kind of color so you know why not live a little plus you just mix it with water and only mix a little bit at a time though because it really basically doesn't keep. I've got a jar of this stuff that smells like ammonia and I don't think that's good. I don't want my little candle sconce stink in the place out. Okay, so now that I've put that sealant on to seal the pine, the milk paint goes on really easily. Pretty. So I'll just get this ready to go and then while it's drying, I'll show you how to do the copper stuff. Okay, that baby's painted up. All right, so pretty. It, it dries very matte. 
So I'm going to move on to the copper stuff now while that's drying. And this copper is really cool, and you have to buy it from a sheet metal supplier. And um, at least that's the only place I've found it so far. And y you can get one of these hot shot little sheet metal things that tells you how thick it is. But let me tell you, what you're looking for is 0 .007 th um, millimeters thick, or I think it's a number 36 in the, in the US gauge. So here we have this lovely copper, and it's terribly soft. Watch. You can make a beautiful impression in it with almost any household implement. And then when you turn it over, see it's all embossed. Isn't that pretty? And you can exaggerate that even further by burnishing it and all kinds of things. But to start with, you need to make a design on paper. Just draw any kind of a design you like on paper, um, like I did. And then, um, then actually cover it with clear contact paper, because otherwise the paper rips up when you're pushing on it to make your design. And then you'll need to put it onto the copper. Let me just. so it all lies flat. Put it onto the copper and then just, um, if, if you're nervous about it moving around, you can tape it in place um, with some tape. And uh, even an old hacked up ballpoint pen will do the trick. All right, so all you do is start carving your design. And then you're gonna wanna check on it all the time because you're gonna be curious. So you just lift up a corner. Yep, it's working. See, and then um, if you get to these little pointy bits, w which are done with individual little punches, you can just take the ballpoint pen again and make those little dots one at a time until you have the whole thing punched out. It's nice to actually use a ballpoint pen because you can, you can trace your own pattern. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so again, like half the battle is just getting a design, but you can trace it out of a book or you can just make your own wild design. So I'll tape this down and then I'll show you how to cut it out and put it on the back of the board. Okay, the candle sconce is almost done. I'm having um, a little bit of an interesting time with this copper because it looks a bit flat when you finish it. So the idea is to flip it over to the wrong side and go over tracing inside the lines, like here, for example, to give it additional, um, to make it really look very three-dimensional. So e everywhere you've made a line, you trace um, to make it look more sticky outy as I like to use that adjective. Okay, and then watch what happens when you turn it over. It's very exciting. I originally made the thing a little bit too big for the actual size of my candle, so I didn't use my whole design. Ta-da! See how it looks really three-dimensional? Isn't that cool? And now if you want to, you can take a little bit of sandpaper and then just burnish the high spots, which is what I did over here, which is why it looks kind of brushed, has that brushed feeling. Um, then just cut it out, and it, if you get the right gauge, it cuts out just with scissors, and then we'll tack it onto the back of the candle sconce. Okay, almost done here. So the uh, you need to take a nail and just punch the copper so you can put these little fine upholstery nails in. I actually found copper upholstery nails at a boating place. Well, they're probably boating nails, but they look really good on the background. Um, okay, so that's that. The last thing you want to do is just take a little sandpaper and buff up the corners so it looks a bit old, like the paint's a bit worn. That'll do it. And then put your candle in. And then, look, matching set for the other, either side of a door. Cool, eh? OK, so that's working with um, your own version of a candle sconce. There's somebody who lives around here whose work I just love. He's a blacksmith, and he makes incredible candle sconces. His name's Mark Freeman. And um, I love his stuff. Look, this one has all the pretty it takes forever to do this with iron, I might add. All the pretty curly cues on it. And then the one on the left is curly cues again. I don't know how he gets them so even. He probably scored really high in geometry. 
And then the very top one is very whimsical with those beautiful leaves, and it's all leaning to the left side. So, you know, metal is really cool, and you can learn to work with it, and you'll have a most excellent life if you learn to work with metal. That's my theory. When you finish a project, you feel exhilarated, and that's one thing you can share with Euclid. Because when he finished writing all those geometry axioms, you can bet he kicked back with a cold one. Yeah, we all have Euclid to thank for today's perfectly proportioned beer bottles. Now that's geometry we can all appreciate.